the cart and read and see what it is it's asking for. You also need to determine how many variables you have. If you have two variables, how many equations do we have to make? Two. If we have three variables, how many equations do we have to make? Three. Three. So determine what your variables are and determine how many equations you have to make. Once you get your equation set up, then you can use your matrix for these guys. It, it's a, it is a lot easier because the harder part is getting the, the equation. So the first one we're going to do says a candy recipe calls for 2.25 times as much brown sugar as white sugar. So what has more? Brown sugar or white sugar? Brown sugar has more, right? Over two times as much as the white. Over two times. So brown is going to have more. If 23 ounces of sugar are required, how much, this is what it's asking you, how much of each type is needed? What types are there? White and brown. So here's your let statement. Let X equals white sugar. Let Y, this is really important, brown sugar. Does it matter which one I call X, which one I call Y? Well, I, I'm okay with that, but we're going to use X and Y in our equation. Just because otherwise, you know, we start getting too many variables, and then you got to worry about putting them in a certain order to bring it back from your matrix. So I found in the past when I did it with different variables, it was a little tougher. So we'll stick with the X and the Y if that's okay. So if I have two variables, how many equations do I need? Two. So, anybody come up with one equation from this? Okay. Co hold one sec, one sec. 23 ounces are required of both of your sugars. So, Anita came up and said, well, if I add the brown and the white, I get 23 ounces. One equation. 23 ounces of sugar, of all sugars. So, a second equation... Okay, now, I want you to think about it. Y times 2.25 says, this is your brown, this is your white. Who's going to have more? According to this, if brown has one ounce of sugar, how much is white going to have? 2.25. Who's supposed to have more? Brown. So work with this. What can we do? X times 2.25. Now let's try this again. If white has one ounce of sugar, how much will brown have? Ah, and that's what I wanted, wasn't it? I wanted brown to have more than white. So let's just turn this guy around. 2.25x equals y. So we have two equations, two variables. Now, this lends itself really nicely, algebraically, I could substitute. If this is equal to y in terms of x, can I take out the y and plug this guy in? Substitution, right? It lends itself very nicely to substitution. We're going to do it on your calculator in a minute. I could say x plus 2.25x equals y. Okay? Oh, sorry, equals y. Okay, so now I only have x in here. If I add my x's together, and I solve for x, When you put this in your calculator, this doesn't come out to be a whole number. And that's okay. We're going to round to three decimal places. So white's going to get a little more than 7 ounces. When we do it in your matrix, we can turn your fraction, your decimal, into a fraction. <laughs> we can't here unless we actually do a physical long divide, which is horrible to do. Now, to find your y, 
we take this one statement, 2.25 times, and we come out with your y. And your y will be equal to 0.923 ounces. Now, because you gave me a less statement, you can give your answer in order like this. F Y. You can give me X equals, Y equals, or you can give me this. You cannot give me this answer as a pair unless you gave me this less statement. Because I will have to say X and Y. <coughs> what are your X and Y? You have to give me your less and your answer. Now, let's see if we can put this in your matrix. To put this guy, the second equation, into your matrix, it has to line up in this order. So what should I do to this equation? I need to have it in this order, x, y, constant. My first one lines up nicely, 1, 1, 23. It, it has both of these. This has an X and has a Y. But this guy says X equals Y. Subtract the Y and it says 0. Okay, subtract the Y. So 2.25X minus Y equals 0. Now I've got my second part. Negative 1, 0. So let's enter this in your matrix. Did everybody see what we did? You have to line it up. You have to give me x, y, constant. x, y, constant. It's okay that you have a negative 1 as a coefficient. It's okay. So let's put this in. Let me clear my ink off of it. So let's go second matrix. Go to edit. Now, my matrix doesn't look like a 3 by 4 anymore. It looks like a 2 by 3. So 2 by 3. That's why some of yours might have looked like 2 by 3 instead of 3 by 4 is when you started. So let's put this in. 1, 1, 23. Then we've got 2.25. Don't forget your decimal. Negative 1, 0. Second quit, second matrix, tell. Okay. Second matrix again. Now let's see. There's our x, 7.077. There's our y. 15.923. Now, the same way you do it in your calculator, second math, or math fraction rather, math, fraction, answer. We'll take your matrix and put it into a fraction. These are exact values. We could divide yours out using that fraction, 3.25 as, of 2.25 as 2 and 1 fourth. We could do it that way and get a fraction. But we don't let the calculator do it. If I need an exact value, I know exactly how much white sugar I need, how much brown sugar I need. And then exact. Remember your fraction is your exact. Okay? Make sense? Alright. Now, second one, this one's a little tougher. This involves investment. So the curve? Well, not as, not as hard as curve. We're going to use your simple interest formula. Your simple interest said this. Said your rate times your interest, or your principal times your rate, gave you your interest. You take how much you invested. If you invested $100 at 5%, how much did you earn on that? 
Well, let me just make it easier. If you invested $100 at 10%, how much did you earn? $10. $10. Your interest was $10. This is what you made on your investment. So we're going to keep this real simple. We're just going to use your simple interest. Okay? Now, principal times rate. So this problem says a total of $1,520 a year is received in interest. In interest, that means it came from this guy right there. From three investments, the interest rates are 5%, 7%, 8%. <laughs> the 5% investment is half of the 7%, and the 7% is 1500 less than the 8%. Find the amount of each investment. Okay, but hang on. How many investments do we have? Three. Three. Therefore, how many variables do we have? Three. So, let x equal, let y equal, let z equal. We are, we're looking for the amount that was invested. So, the amount at 5%. The amount at 7%. And the amount at 8%. How do I write 5% as a decimal? 0 0.05. 0 0.05. Then 0 0.07. Then 0 0.08. Now, here's your first one. This one's the easiest one to go for. We need three equations. You collected a total in interest. There's your interest. You collected a total in interest from multiplying your principal times your rate. This is my principal. I don't know what it is. There's my rate. Principal times rate. 0.05x. Principal times rate. Plus 0.07y. Principal times rate plus 0.08z. All this will give me interest that I add up, and then my, when I add up my interest, it comes to 1,520 for the year. Well, let's digest this for a minute. So before we invested $100 at 10%, we made $10. If I invested $100 at 5%, $200 at 7%, $300 at 8%, wouldn't I take all those together and add them up? So essentially that's what I'm doing here. Principal times rate. Rate times principal. Rate times principal. Rate times principal. That's giving me my simple interest. That's all we're doing. And then we're going to add up all the interest because this is the money you earn. You didn't earn what you invested. You put that money in there to make you money. So this is where, this is a good starting point. This is our, our first equation. Now, we go to this guy. The 5%, let's go back to your variable. What's our variable at 5%? X. X. X is equals half of the 7. What's the 7? Y. Y. So, Here's another equation. If you don't like variables, can we change that? Can we multiply both sides by 2? I mean, uh, you don't like the uh, fraction, not the triple sign. Yeah, I said that backwards, right? <laughs> so there's another equation. Yes? Can we leave it like that, or just um, automatically switch it to the well, let, let's just, we'll look at it and then we'll switch it around. Now, that's this guy. And the 7%, what is the 7%? Y, y is 1,500 less than the 8. How am I going to write that? Who has more, the 8 or the 7? 8. Y equals? Y equals? Z minus Z minus. 
okay? Because he's less than the 8. Remember what happens with the left. The left comes last. We have to turn that guy around. So here's another one. Y is equal to Z minus 1,500. Okay? Now, we have three equations, three variables. We're going to put this in your matrix. It's not that bad to solve because, first of all, I can solve everybody in terms of y. I can solve x in terms of y. I can solve z. I can just use, go back to my one half if I wanted to. And I can solve z, add 1500. I can solve everybody in terms of y and substitute it into the first equation. That would work. But we're going to put this in your matrix. So we're going to use our matrix. And we're going to use your matrix. If you prefer to do them by hand, if it's easier. Okay. Now, this guy is set up okay. I'm going to rewrite these equations over here. 2x equals y, and y equals z minus 1500. Because we need to line these up. x, y, and z. So how can I write this to get my x, y, and z? Subtract it, right? 2x. Minus y equals what? Zero. Zero. What should I put in for z? Zero. Okay. I gotta get this in x, y, z format. So get it over here. Oh. We gotta get the fifteen hundred oh. alone. Subtract the z. So y minus z equals negative fifteen hundred. What's my x? Zero. Oh, you need to put negative 1500 Yeah, so you, right. if you wanted to, you could multiply everything by negative 1. Your, your matrix will work it out. Well, why do you need a Because we need the constant on that side. The constant has to stay on the right-hand side of that equation. So now, let's pull out your coefficient. So, 0 0.05, 0 0.07, 0 0.08, 1520. 2, negative 1, 0, 0. 0, 1, negative 1, uh, negative 1500. Let's go throw this in your matrix. It doesn't look right because you have negative 1500. That's, that's true. But that's okay. Your matrix will handle all of this for us. So, how do I set this up? Three rows, three by four. Good. Okay, and just enter it as you see. Remember to say quit. Now I'm just going to print out my matrix because I want to make sure. I'm just going to say this. Go to matrix A. I want to make sure I got all these pieces. And you might have to scroll. See the arrow? You're going to have to scroll over a little bit. But once I make sure I have all my pieces in, I'm just going to scroll over and make sure everything went in the right way. The last thing I want to do is mess that up. Second matrix, go to calc or math. Sorry, I'm so used to saying calc because that's what my statistics says. It's calc. Okay, I'm going to tell it, I put this in matrix A. Okay, look how nice this is. I'm going to write the answers right over here if it lets me. Okay, good. X is how much? $4,000. Y is how much? $8,000. And Z is $9,500. Are we okay with that? 
let's see if this makes sense to us. My x, my x, where's my statement? My y has twice as much as my x. Oh, my y has twice as much as my x. Make sense? And my y, where is this guy? My y is 1,500 block of my z. Ah, look at that. Right, you're seeing that right? So, here's your answers. Now, whether you write it that way or you write it as a triple because you already did your let statement, either way is fine with me. As long as you have those let statements there. Somewhere you have to give me an answer. If you prefer to do it by hand rather than the matrix because your substitutions weren't so bad, that's okay. The hardest part, guys, 